a delicious and satisfying grain that not only offer defense against one of the humanity's greatest curses, Alzheimer dementia, but also protect you from the number one cause of permanent blindness, macular degeneration. And at the same time, can beat all your expensive probiotic pills. Is it true? Don't worry, you are not dreaming. Mother Nature herself has packed all these goodness into one incredible package. And you don't need to hunt it down in some far off land. Nope. In fact, you can find it right in your local grocery store or even at the corner gas station at a cost cheaper than even your bread. I know you have seen titles like this by big celebrities doctors. Have they got it all wrong? Welcome friends. This is your host Dr. Binay Kumar, a triple board certified MD. I know it's going to shock many of you to learn that the humble grain of corn can help you defend your brain from dementia and your eyes from the number one cause of permanent blindness and so much more. You may ask, what about the specific form of corn, the popcorn, which is everyone's favorite snack? Could something so delicious and so loved by everyone be good for you? And almost everyone has a perception from somewhere that it's not good for you. Welcome to the health discovery of popcorns. Now, let me address the question on everyone's mind. Is popcorn a healthy snack? This question has two parts. The first part. What are you adding in your popcorn or corn? Corn slathered in butter and salt will not be considered healthy due to sodium, saturated fat and cholesterol content. And also it's much heavier in calories. But if you are eating air popped corn itself or sprinkled with some nutritional yeast, then it is much healthier option for you. And the second part will be the replacement effect. As Dr. Michael Greger from Nutrition Facts would say, if you are putting aside a kale for eating popcorn, then bad popcorn! But if you are pushing away bacon, french fries, hash browns, hamburgers, grilled cheese sandwiches, bagels, white bread chips, Doritos for popcorn, then my friend, Popcorn deserves a big thank you for being a healthier option. But the question is, what makes corn a healthy food? Because corn possesses some special health promoting properties. It contains a unique set of phytochemicals such as phenolic acids, fiber, resistant starches, vitamins including vitamin A, most of the vitamins of B group, vitamin E, vitamin K, minerals like magnesium, potassium, phosphorus, and flavonoids. These wonderful healing compounds are mainly concentrated in bran and germ part of corn seed. Here is a vital principle my patients follow. Always choose whole intact grains rather than flowered grains because whole intact grain is so much natural and healthier. But if you are opting for an inferior option, a corn flour, then opting for whole corn flour with the ground germ, endosperm and bran is preferable choice compared to refined corn starch or corn oil. To understand why, let me take you back 150 years in history to a tense standoff 
in Incheon Bay near Seoul, which is in today's South Korea, where four Japanese warships were locked in a tense standoff with two Chinese warships. Japan was Asia's first modern imperial navy, and apart from superior technology, Japanese navy men clearly outnumber Chinese. But inside the Japanese ships, a paralyzing secret was concealed. Many of the Japanese navy men were literally paralyzed. What could have caused such paralysis in Asia's most powerful naval force? It was the consumption of refined grains, stripped of its germ and bran, and relying solely on the endosperm part of the grains. Why endosperm part of the seed was preferred in ships? Not only it was tastier, undeniably addictive, also had a much longer shelf life, but lacked essential vitamins and nutrients. The Japanese Navy men were afflicted with beriberi, a condition resulting from vitamin B1 deficiency. Scurvy, on the other hand, had been the curse of sailors for thousands of years. An estimated 2 million sailors perished from the disease just between 16th and 18th centuries, often resulting in the decimation of the entire ship crews. These are some of few spine-chilling examples of poor nutrition in history. These unfortunate events are endless and still continuing. Millions of people dying endlessly and needlessly every year in modern world, including extremely educated and monetarily rich people from poor nutrition, such is the power of lack of nutrition knowledge and the grasp of food addictions. That is why I made it my mission to help people through nutritional sciences. Now, getting back to our whole corn story, just like the above stories, refined corn flour primarily consists of endosperm which can lead to increased blood sugar and insulin levels while providing relatively empty calories. In contrast, whole corn flour includes the fiber-rich bran and nutrient-packed germ, which offers a lower glycemic index and greater nutritional value. Corn may also protect our brains from the curse of dementia and protect our eyes from the number one cause of permanent blindness in the Western world, the age-related macular degeneration. Blue, red, and purple corn contain a higher level of anthocyanidins, which are purple pigments also found in blueberries and known for its potential benefits in dementia prevention. But do these anthocyanidins reach the brain, which is so protected by the blood-brain barrier? Yes, these anthocyanidins cross the blood-brain barrier, bathing brain regions involved in learning and memory. On the other hand, yellow corn, is rich in carotenoids such as lutein and zeaxanthin, which makes a shield in the back of our eyes to protect our retinas from blue spectrum of light. And yes, research supports that lutein and zeaxanthins may help protect you from age-related macular degeneration as well as dementia. Unbelievable, isn't it? Moreover, regular consumption of whole corn has been associated with a reduced risk of chronic diseases 
such as cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and obesity. But I tell my patients not to just eat purple corn, but combine all the colors of corn so they can access a wide range of phytochemicals and reap the health rewards. So, to summarize, so far we have discussed how corn contains a unique set of phytochemicals such as phenolic acids, flavonoids, fiber, resistant starches and a variety of minerals and a plenty of different vitamins and how corn's anthocyanidins can protect you from age-related macular degeneration the number one cause of permanent blindness in western world and lutein and zeaxanthin can protect you from retinal damage and dementia corn's benefits don't stop there let's find out how nature's inexpensive corn may beat your fancy and expensive probiotic pills in health benefits but i hear you saying Corn has starches. Starches will make me fat. I am scared. I understand that there is a widespread confusion about the effects of starches. Let the refreshing breeze of knowledge and the illuminating rays of clarity penetrate the dense fog of confusion. The classic mistake made by scientists and proponents of low-carb camp is that they observe the harms of refined and processed carbohydrates including simple carbohydrates like table sugar, soda, croissants, muffins, donuts, bagels, chips and other packaged junk and mistakenly assume that all carbohydrates are bad. They become so entrenched in their ignorance that they disregard the consistent scientific finding that the longest living people on earth without health problems primarily consume carbohydrates and starch based diets sourced from whole food plant based diet with minimal unprocessed animal products. I agree. Processed carbohydrates are evil, just like more than minimum intake of saturated fat and cholesterol-rich animal foods. Let's delve deeper into the understanding of starches. We all know that starches are carbohydrates derived from plants, and they exist in two forms, amylose and amylopectin. Unlike amylopectin, Amylose is a resistant starch. Study after study demonstrates that resistant starches can significantly enhance and fortify the immune system, improve digestion and waste disposal functions, lower cholesterol and enhance digestion. How does it achieve these benefits? As the name suggests, resistant starches are somewhat resistant to our digestive enzymes. Consequently, a significant portion of corn's resistant starch amylose reaches the colon where our beneficial bacteria ferment it. What's the outcome? Wonderful compounds like short-chain fatty acids, propionates, butyrates, acetates, which offer a wide range of benefits these short-chain fatty acids nourish the cells lining our colon, help maintain the integrity of our gut barrier, preventing leaky gut, reducing the risk of colon cancer. It also slow down our stomach emptying, leading to prolonged feeling of fullness and even affect our appetite centers in the brain signaling satiety and aiding in maintaining a healthy weight. Are you keeping up with me? Excellent! On a side note, do you want to know what our colon bacteria produce 
when we consume eggs, meat or seafood? Cleveland Clinic tells us TMAO which has been linked to elevated risk of stroke and heart attack independent of artery clogging effects of cholesterol and saturated fat. So here you go. Now getting back to the topic, you may have heard about probiotics but let me ask you if you know about prebiotic and postbiotics. Allow me to burst the probiotic bubble. My friends, there isn't much evidence supporting the widespread use of probiotic supplements, except in very specific cases, such as after antibiotic use. In fact, probiotics have caused deaths in patients with pancreatitis and can contribute to antibiotic resistance and infections in immunosuppressed individuals. It is also crucial to note that probiotic pills and powders are part of supplement industry which remains unregulated and are not monitored by the FDA. Often these products lack the claimed ingredients or bacteria. Even if these bacteria are present within the capsules, they are frequently dead, making them useless to say the least. Perhaps you took extra measures to ensure the best quality and viable probiotics. But still, these bacteria will simply pass through your colon and you will just flush an expansive poop. How can I make such a claim? Because not only do bacteria starve in our colon, but also we keep a hostile environment for bacteria. How? We unknowingly but actively try to kill them through antibiotics, artificial sweeteners and other toxins and chemicals. You may not have taken antibiotics recently, but know this, approximately 70% of all medically important antibiotics in United States are sold for use in animals. So no wonder most animal products such as chicken, meat, dairy products are laden with significant antibiotics. This is the primary reason for the lack of bacterial diversity in people's colon. Now, understand this. Bacteria feed on fiber, resistant starches and other residual plant compounds, all of which are found in one place, whole plant foods. Unfortunately, Americans do not consume enough of these foods. It may surprise you, my friends that 97% of Americans fail to meet the bare minimum requirement of 30 grams of fiber per day. Please share your fiber intake and diet in the comment section. Now fiber and resistant starches lead us to the next point, prebiotics. Because prebiotic is just another name for fiber. Resistant starches and other non digestible plant compounds. So, your money will be much better spent on prebiotics, and bacteria will thrive in your colon, feeding on prebiotics from colorful plants. So, is it clear now that prebiotics are the prerequisite of healthy bacteria in our colon? Great. Now, having knowledge of prebiotics, Let's move on to postbiotics. Postbiotics are the amazing compounds produced by our bacteria when they feast on prebiotics in our colon. Or put another way, postbiotics are the poop, pee, sweat and spit of our healthy bacteria in our colon. Sounds gross, right? Are you ready to know 
what mouth watering products are these bacterial poop pee and sweats here we go vitamin b12 vitamin k folate amino acids enzymes and those fantastic short chain fatty acids butyrates propionates acetates we just talked above and many more wonderful compounds not so bad huh if i have not grossed you out too much then hear this these trillions of bacteria live in harmony with our body and they have intricate knowledge of our complex system and they even talk with different organs and control them to some degree interesting huh so if these bacteria controls our body so do we have any control over these bacteria yes but how by choosing what we eat what we eat decides what type of bacteria we have in our colon whole food plant based diet will support healthier bacteria and fiber devoid foods like meat chicken eggs dairy and processed foods like bagel white bread chips will promote the bad bacteria in your colon my patients save their money and ignore the popular trend of probiotics and instead support their gut bacteria with a variety of colorful plants eat your rainbow now let's bring our focus back to corn among all the common grains corn boasts the highest content of amylose which you remember is a resistant starch or a prebiotic or food for healthy bacteria despite these numerous health benefits the average consumption of whole grains including corn in united states is inadequate usda recommends that we consume more than 170 grams of whole grains daily and i recommend to my patients that all of which should be in the form of whole intact grains but less than 10% of americans are eating recommended amount of whole grain even if you include floured whole grains which are inferior in quality than whole intact grains americans prefer refined grains why refined grains have an addictive quality just like any processed food duh remember every small step towards a healthier lifestyle count please share your journey and inspire those around you together we can create a community of positive change and unlock our full health potential thank you for joining me today and always remember that popcorn can be a green light food when enjoyed mindfully and as a part of balanced whole food plant based diet in the next video we discuss the most life changing study on hypertension and how a simple cheap supplement costing just few cents a day can do a miracle for your high blood pressure watch the video to find out